Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll describe the second price sealed bid, or Vickery auction, and its Nash equilibrium. The second price sealed bid auction is also known as the Vickery auction, from Vickery's seminal 1961 auction paper. Its elegant structure and equilibrium make it the benchmark auction to which all other auctions are compared. Despite its elegance, other auctions are often more attractive in practice since, among other things, the Vickery auction is vulnerable to collusion and low revenue generation. You can read more about these drawbacks in Osbell and Milgram's chapter, The Lovely But Lonely Vickery Auction, from the book Combinatorial Auctions. We'll study this auction as the benchmark auction, the auction by which all others are judged. In the second price sealed bid auction, the high bidder wins the object and pays the highest losing bid. The highest losing bid is the second highest price, hence the name of the auction. Let's give two examples of this auction in practice. Suppose there are three bidders who bid 2, 1, and 3, respectively. Bidder 3 wins, since 3 is the highest bid, and pays 2, the highest bid not her own. In this example, we keep the same three bidders, but now let them bid 2, 3, and 3, respectively. In the event of a tie for the highest bid, a winner is selected at random from the highest bidders. Suppose the tie breaks in favor of bidder 3. She wins and pays 3, since bidder 2's bid of 3 is the highest bid not belonging to bidder number 3. We now turn our attention to the Nash Equilibrium bidding strategy of the Vickery auction. The game is one of incomplete information, but since our equilibrium bidding strategies will be weakly dominant and hence independent of beliefs, we obtain a full Nash equilibrium rather than the weaker Bayesian Nash equilibrium. First, fix some bidder little n. Whenever the highest bid not belonging to little n is greater than v little n, bidder little n is better off losing than winning. Whenever the highest bid not belonging to little n is less than v little n, bidder little n is better off winning than losing. Putting these observations together, Bitter little n wants to win exactly when doing so means paying a price not more than her valuation, v little n. She achieves this goal exactly when she submits a bid equal to her valuation. This argument did not hinge on beliefs or other player strategies. We have therefore found a Nash equilibrium in weakly dominant strategies. The outcome is that the bidder with the highest valuation wins and pays the highest valuation among the losing bidders. The strategy bid your value in the Vickery auction neatly coincides with drop out at your value in the ascending clock auction. Furthermore, for any given set of bidders and valuations, the winner and price paid in these two auctions are the same. We say that the Vickery and ascending clock auctions are equivalent in the sense that strategies, winner, and payment all coincide. This table lays out the details of the possible outcomes based on the relationship between valuation, and the highest bid bi not belonging to bidder little n. We can see that in each case, a bidder is no worse off and sometimes better off for bidding her own valuation. Thanks so much for watching this video about the second price sealed bid auction. In the next video, we'll describe how to find the Bayesian Nash equilibrium of the first price sealed bid auction using a method that is also applicable to the all pay sealed bid auction.